to hear up at in Chiprock, New Mexico, over at Northern Navajo Medical Center. Uh, we are on the road, and we're getting ready to uh, break, uh, cut the ribbon at a uh, new um, Inuit wireless uh, cell tower site. So uh, your CARES Act dollars at work. So uh, we we clap. So we're just looking forward to getting up there and do the ribbon cutting. So it's a great thing when you can uh, enhance the quality of life here on Navajo. So, but without further ado, we're going to go and open up in prayer so uh, let's do that real quick i'll give a quick update and then we'll uh, uh turn it over to president jonathan nez here uh, real quick so um yeah dear god we thank you lord for another day of life Bohani, god we praise you we ask for your blessing uh on the land heal the people lord father i pray that you would use this time lord many are uh seeking you your guidance your counsel your wisdom your knowledge lord and uh, we ask for you to be with us on this town hall meeting, Lord. Uh, bless those that have been giving out data, information. Uh, bless the president, Jonathan Nez, who is on travel again, going to the grand opening of the big clavicle um, cell tower with Intuway Wireless. So it's a great day. It's a cold day. We thank you for the moisture. We thank you that our animals are blessed uh, all across the land. Lord, uh, we thank you that the, the the tilling of the land, Lord, in the springtime will be good. That the first planting, Lord, will be will be great, and that many will be enjoying a, a great planting season. So we thank you for the moisture again. God bless uh, the land and the people in the land, Father. We pray for healing for the people, Lord. Today, as we uh, uh, pray for our citizens all across the nation, should the name. Um, we just want to uh, ask your healing, your touch on them, your love, mercy, and grace to. Rule and reign all across the, uh, the land you've given us, Father. We thank you again on this Town Hall COVID update. The, the nation, the people, Lord, would be blessed by the uh, information and the data and that they could act accordingly and be blessed by it. Thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, we, we thank you. Amen and amen. Um, so thank you again, uh, COVID-19 Town Hall update, all those on the call. We appreciate you, and it's for you that we do this. Um, passing out information, we've got the vaccine rollout. We've got new vaccine coming. It's a big uh, surplus of vaccine here that was sent to the nation. And uh, you'll be hearing from Dr. Jim and some of our health professionals, Dr. Va. We appreciate all their leadership and their commitment to this vaccine rollout. And I think at that, They've been so successful and efficient that uh, there's been more uh, vaccines sent to us. So when you're found uh, faithful in the small thing, the larger things are given to you. And so here we're talking about getting 100,000 doses of the vaccine, whether they be Pfizer or whether they be Moderna, into the arms of our people. So we're thankful for the commitment and the sacrifice of our health professionals. And that's where we are up here at the Northern Navajo Medical Center. Again, we're on travel, Vice President and my staff, Adam, and president as well, uh, and Miss Navajo, we're going to have the here uh, real soon to uh, do the ribbon cutting and the dedication of the Intuit Wireless's brand new cell tower out there, enhancing broadband, enhancing wireless coverage there for the citizens of not only the but also those that are traveling through there. As you know, um, uh, just a lot of people, Tisnas Basra, Mesa, on and on through the area there. So. Uh, we appreciate their hard work and diligence. So that'll happen at 11 a.m. Uh, we are just we just got off the radio, KNDN uh, 960, and we were talking about all of these updates. Uh, we're advocating for those of you who are receiving the CARES Act funding. Um, man, please be diligent. Don't travel abroad and spend your money, right? Uh, sit on it. Save it. Uh, invest it into uh, Arizona 529 College Savings Plan. Go to the website, az529.gov. This is the state of Arizona State Treasurer, Kimberly Yee's um, great program where they're growing the state's coffers, but they're also benefiting the investors, those that are saving money tax-free for uh, education purposes. So you could use it for attending a two-year institution, a four-year institution, post-secondary also, uh, trade schools, you know, those of you who are maybe becoming an architect or a designer or a welder or a pipe fitter, iron worker, you know, learning about plumbing, the building trade, maybe carpentry school, you could use it for those and you could use it for books and room and board and any costs associated with uh, attending a uh, higher education institution. So it's a great program. You get, again, the savings at that tax-free 
And uh, as long as you use it for those uh, qualified purchases and qualified ways of, uh, you know, uh, spending it, uh, you won't have to pay a tax on it. And uh, say you put 25, a little, as little as $25 away when a, a, a brand new baby, a child is born, uh, and it'll stay with them. In 18 years, you'll have over $18,000. What a great program. So again, saving for our, our children's future, saving for their future uh, uh, college endeavors and uh, educational endeavors as well. And that's what you could do with this uh, CARES Act money that's come. Say you receive $1,500, right? Don't go out and spend it all. Flat screen TV, Nintendo, you know, the Le Oculus, all these things that are, you know, are, are really intriguing. Uh, it's great to have money in our pocket, but put it away. That's That way you don't, you're not tempted, right? Those that are successful now that are saving money, they can save it for a rainy day. So when a uh, hardship does come on, they have money for it. So anyway, we're just advocating. Don't go on a spending free, uh, spending uh, spree, but uh, stay home, stay safe, and save lives. So with that, uh, we're just, uh, again, I normally give you updates. I don't have that apparatus with me and the capability. So we're going to just be, uh, uh, again, uh, on our way to the conference wall up there for the unveiling of Intuit Wireless's new tower, dedicated right now. With, along with President Miss Nabo and uh, I believe uh, Honorable Delegate uh, Anna, Anna Burr, uh Karate will be with us. So again, thank you again. I'm going to uh, give it up to uh, our President Jonathan Nez. We appreciate his leadership, his stellar leadership in this fight against COVID-19 here. And uh, the vaccine rollout has been under his auspice. And, uh, you know, we're out there doing, promoting it. Uh, we all got our shots, and many of you have, and many of you are still on the fence. Uh, there's more vaccine coming, so let's get safe. And with that, again, don't get too safe and too confident because, uh, you know, we want you to continue to mask up. In fact, two masks, President, and our, our health professional is going to talk about the variants that are out there. Again, uh, we appreciate the leadership of all of those that are becoming after me. So God bless you. God bless our great Navajo Nation. So ladies and gentlemen, the President Jonathan Nez of our great Navajo Nation. Okay, love you. God bless you. Ne kodo kanata so kizi to na kihet ni dishni do le shady filia fowler da shijne my dish kijin in shlon kodich ini bashish chin tapaha da shiche do tashche da shinale kodo e kihet ni di ni do le anos ko aro alaj te nos ni shi zeh ene da nos ni do zeh ni ka da nos ni tisn da Here, <laughs> As in Lini, as Twido son in Lini Nakapa at Hosnia, Ado Hashine Lashi Que, um, is there in Lini Pahana does ne epa, Pata Hosnia, Shikedo, Shed in Neto, Chianda, Toda Abanda, Jabel Tleda, called the Cousin Lini Gi, and the Cousin and San Lini Nasni Hippets, Ado Que. And he is about any but he needs indeed a yasnah. A stout epitinic. Nasni, he ate about a he needs and dante. Johashine, la ek at 
Besie do a quitchen cotope not need him, as there is an in Lenny Cotto Arge Hashine Lago Yen Hisntahadne, Ado Beto Cotto Aton Atin da Alcasai, a Haladin Hachin and Lenny E. Hashpa at the Atseha Neniki, Jo Arge Elchin and Lenny is a Bahato Nessie to E. Arge and the Alca Ati. Ado quae is the Bahasli eco na ki is aunt a Materna do Pfizer Dayne or a you in Hitchahonal in a quantity is the el in a Besnahas ago a as aunt a bitch a hundal in hido age the ne bitch a hotas ne ejo a hot a is the um naha ata kai ba a ye needs in Ado. Nathes Twisani Itani Land A eighty is the Ha Al Iho Njuno Ban to the Kesa Ha Ha Al Ito and Juno Shindol Nishol Yet or Hot Ada Nta and Skind A Eskita A Ko Oshi Yugo Ban An Na and Kin It E A Kotini Hinat Ani Lini A Sa Italatina Tani Lini she yaj a din need a cotton a hat so dolls and jo eight of a hair needs and a quitchen co and hits for the zen that eats a ado a ani as a at an he ought to let the whole lord on as lad on he not in a as a at end jo co epe his cut a nature how she ado a teta a job a bech yat he adore a job a tar case of ado a teta she cado she didn't there. A cotido are a zest in a cotto hashin and nikit a hana that see he ate up cotton his ischa and not they do tlifty um hashin eshi ostoit ini, they sniss a hoant or nissi a yis nihidos, um hard sheep at the hane eki to eat up cotto yen his not a hotosne. A cocodo president and Linishi is but it eats after a bishi is a cotto, Nikit and Hatotze, a co ato cojanis kid, a co a ape a baiben natchako or orchard dust, an open his hash neck, a chit or needle she which a hotto is neat and Nikinat and Lini Ado, that is not a he had she kedo should the net. Hata of Gisito, Sad Ade, Beta of any Ashkonde, and Basso Kit on his Zaba at the house. Yeah, we think we want to thank all the listeners for tuning in. We requesting that you be respectful to our presenters and to one another. We were all um, in this together, we all were not experiencing that uh, we're all going to be in this pandemic. But we can overcome it together, ladies and gentlemen. We do provide uh, various updates. We do hear from our uh, healthcare professions of some of the uh, virus updates, the vaccines, the variants that are out there. We just want to make sure that we provide uh, information to you all, to all the listeners, to our various communities. And we do speak, try to do both in English and in the Navajo language. Because a lot of times we may not understand the Navajo language, but it's it's a really good time to learn our language as well. Because back in the day, our elders used to say our language is the most critical piece, and it's good to learn it. And you know, it's it's really up to us as individuals. We know that the pandemic had impacted us all emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, but. You know, we have to, we're going to all overcome this together as one. We turn to our creators, our prayers that will get us from day to day. We do want to continue to educate and we do want to continue to have you take preventative measures. And it's not, we're not going to stop saying it. We want you to continue wearing your mask. I'm not wearing my mask today because I'm 
calling in from home right now. We have our leaders that are traveling out to the vaccination areas who um, we will tune in from there shortly. And we did have our Vice President Myron Lizer did the prayer this morning. We thank him for doing our prayer. Thank him for doing the prayer this morning. And every day we want to thank each and every one of you that conduct the, your prayers every morning for healing. And it, we're in the healing stages right now. Our numbers are going down. We have individuals that are being vaccinated. We want to thank all of you for your patience. All healthcare facilities are different. They're operating different. So we, we, can, um, we can continue to say, let's move forward, but we still want to have you continue taking preventative measures by wearing your mask, practicing social distancing, and then also um, continue washing your hands, using hand sanitizers and so forth. We did uh, return our employees to work um, within our Navajo Nation and other enterprises. We are looking at some other areas of reopening, but we want to do it in the most cautious way possible. And with that, we, we were saying this because we want to make sure that our safety measures are continuously being practiced. And we want to thank all our Navajo Nation employees that have returned to work. We want you to continue wearing your mask in the workplace. We want you to continue taking, using uh, your safety measures in the workplace. Ashhodta <laughs> Joe <laughs> Dr. Jim, uh, we'll give you five minutes. Our president will be joining us in five minutes. Thank you, Dr. Jim. I'm sorry, um, listeners. So well, let's continue. And we can um, move forward with our, I'll continue speaking until our president does get on. And hits Akodi 
nihen sekhes o yu ila ta i ilia ako aja zeh inye ta anihi etsi ga ta ye ta anihi jo aja na alkhai etsi ata athi jo ek apet ho ye inte ta holo etshin te jo aja e bichang ko to ne o pe bichang ko to zehin te jo ko eto hashin se ko petenitle ko di effect all of us emotionally and mentally the shnini ki to able ganak to hot ahisne and to in order for us to get some counseling that's what is needed we were all impacted in many ways from this pandemic so we need some guidance on some counseling and it just it just really to the point of where it's really good to be there for someone and just to hear them and to listen our deepest condolences to those of us that lost loved ones we lost many loved ones that's a lot we ask you to stay strong remain strong to talk with one another and to be respectful ashi ani nikheta stel o konda hashto itado le shik edo shidna khajo khazad lini be chiyata chilti o a atata khashine la eton hinse khesi to hot ego ato hita hititi ni seko ta hititi no bane khe anle na nishden de hot a ko oyo de kanta khosen is ila ado khashine la beson de khishin da pasa hollo ho wat ado na nishde da pachga ha ko ho ihi itela akwande jo khazad ya atha be ya athi ido khazad khajol ke injinel do alalaj in tsa khosol esta tan hite ninde plan ahead you may not have gotten the vaccine but it's good it's just out of courtesy to call ahead and see if the vaccine is available for 16 on up or 65 and over because like i stated every healthcare facility is different they're operating differently and some healthcare facilities only allow a by appointments only so if you can take a look at all those avenues to plan in advance call ahead in various location there are lines that you have to be prepared for if you're with an elderly make sure you have additional snacks you have water you're taking preventative measures to a astishnish kedo shidna alla laj nsho khos alla laj ta asakhoj dolne ado okhos ta hat ilwa jo jo a astishne and we we still have our public health order in place and we want to indicate that you know we want you to still take preventative measures you know our weekends are open to our vaccinations but we still have our public health orders our curfews that are in place so we want you to take care of yourself take care of one another be respectful to one another you know there's all kinds of uh, negative things that do come up but the best way to handle a lot of these things is to remain positive there's going to be a time to where we overcome this together we're all in this together we 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 don't we want to overcome it together but with each and every one's help we will overcome it so at this time i like to turn the floor over to dr jim and if you can share some of your thoughts before we um bring the president on i believe we have about Five more minutes to bring on the president. So at this time, I would like to hand the floor over to our division director, uh, Dr. Jill Jim. Thank you, Dr. Jim. Yes, thank yes. you, um, Shama, um, Dr. Fowler, for that. I just wanted to welcome all the listeners. Kwe, I saw the swanky non do ichi het non kadit ni do she Dr. Jill Jim in she do. Um, look on the small Katini buses chain door is she does a chain door, Zafane does another. I don't know this on the IC Nashato, at least for her young, the epicadence in it all, Kadi, 
als ik twintig had gestudeerd, die zat dat die after president Nance had die just is now I'll see if I can get over with some of these slides. So als je bij Ladanik het je daar, dan ik het je juist het daar. Okay, I think, oh, if you had none, could you need them? Let's see, I can't do that, but I just screen the data, so I wanted to just look through these slides here, so let me go ahead and do that. So, if you have none, thank you so much for logging. Can I be such a hundred days as Dr. Fowler and Minnie? Um, Ashin Kladin, he changed on his head because Kladin is one of the ones that they can do. So, I don't know what to do. Um, I thought that when they get to, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Um, the question is, I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. A the question for so how only the snake has a sheep in that um a hood ah um or it's also a destination and so I wanted to just to do the prevention messages so I'm I seems like President Nez is on the call now so let me go ahead and give him time and I'll continue afterwards so okay hat on President President Nez are you on the line now Kashi Okay, there you go. All right. Okay. Good morning. Can you all hear me? Yes, President. Go ahead, Mr. President. Uh, cell tower. Uh, so, yeah, I actually do let go. But now, okay, the hot in the game. A D B and the kid, the door telephone that that I guess she are at his door. John that the store that so by here needs a delay. Washington that best of the time cares act funding will you know a what out to the seal in the hot out a yeah. Yeah, I have to a day in the con. ในกระดาษเอียดตาอันดินดานเนชโตเดสคาสันเดอร์เดียวตาเอ่อที่เคนี่เห็นนะนานเนชเดลล์โซบาเฮนิตส์โตอันนั้นได้สนับสนุนก
power. Uh, NTOA Choice Wireless and the team, Christopher Besenti from the Navajo Nation Telecommunication Regulatory Commission uh, and partnership. Tower here uh, for this community, high speed internet availability. And uh, we're not too far away from the mountains, right behind uh, the camera here is the Ute Mountains. Uh, and we got uh, into this region. And uh, to my left here is T Stuns bus. So just kind of get. The next he likes that we lost the audio. Are we ready to go? is the the uh the graph that shows the uh 14 day downward trajectory as you can see in in this slide it's color coded red not ready to fully uh reopen And you can see the uh, the upward trend, uh, the holidays bump, and as well as the downward trend that's occurring here on the Navajo Nation. If you go to the next slide, is a comparison of the Navajo Nation as well as the United States of America, and you can see there that the U.S. numbers are also decreasing. Uh, and the Navajo Nation. The Navajo Nation there is the brownish color uh, line and the blue is the United States. So we are seeing
Um, so just wanted to continue uh, while we're able to get um, President back online here. So I'll just continue with um, my presentation here to everyone and hopefully we can get <laughs> President back online here. And so, as I mentioned before, I'm the Navajo Department of Health Director and I always just like to share some of the messaging around um, the work that we all do here. And we do have a, a group of individuals under the command center, including Dr. Ba, Captain Brian Johnson are all contributing every single day along with the 638 and um, a lot of these recommendations, <clears throat> we just encourage everyone to consider them as they are um, our kit and our tools to um, prevent COVID and to any sort of um, variant that's out there. And uh, even though there is that threat that remains and we're always hearing of updated science information and there's so many studies and that are going on and some are observational, but these are new guidelines that we do support here from the Navajo Nation, making sure everyone does wear a mask. Um, it's tight fitted and either double masking and wearing it a different way um, to um, prevent COVID. And also either when you are at home, at work, um, traveling with someone, um, that you're not in the same household with is very important to still wear a mask. Um, we are still hearing of, um, of course, different um, exposures out there and clusters and um, related to a lot of things that um, we like to celebrate in life. Um, that includes funerals um, as well as um, the events related to Super Bowl. We are hearing we are experiencing clusters. I'm not saying hearing, we are still um, hearing of those reports. Also that we did have a three day weekend recently. So we just need to be cautious that we don't gather. And one of the clusters um, that we did hear of is um, more than 30 individuals were in one setting um, and also having an, a, re a reception of some sort um, at an event. These are just the items that we just want to let everyone know. Um, it's very important not to um, go to some sort of normalcy. We're not ready yet um, to have these types of events. And from the public health side, it's very important because it, we don't know. Um, we talk about identifying the different variants, but um, some of them are very easily transmittable. So it's just a precaution. Um, even though we want to get to some back, some back of um, to some sort of normalcy, but we're we're not ready. And so, if you um, start experiencing symptoms of these, we just want to caution people to look out for any flu flu like symptoms as a reminder, as well, and to make sure that um, you identify these and um, encourage individuals to quarantine um, and. Let them know that, um, especially if you do see others that might have these symptoms and they're not taking precautions, um, share a mask with them. You might have extra disposable ones or give them one to use. So that's one recommendation. Also to stop um, shaming those that are have had COVID before. It's probably a really um, not a good experience if you're being ousted, especially if you had COVID. And we just want to encourage people to um, make sure that they take all the precautions. Um, there is also a sense of um, nervousness and anxiety, especially if you're under quarantine. Um, sometimes you might also get false positives and um, the testing is as good as it is. There are the potential to do that, but follow the guidelines from your health providers and Sometimes people do t test a couple of times, but just know that um, it's okay um, to have these feelings and um, that there is going to be that sort of reaction. But others, I hope you find people to support um, you and getting the resources that you're ne you need when you're under quarantine and after you um, briefly recover that you're out in the community again. Um, so just to let you know, it's okay and also um those that are that have come back to work or are already working um always as a reminder to stay at home when you're sick 
it's not worth getting others sick if you feel like you might be in denial maybe that you're thinking that you just have allergies or you might have a cold instead of COVID and you're like, it can't be me, I can't have it. And those are just things that we might need to consider. Um, we do track the number of workplace exposures. So just know, and just be honest with yourself that if you might be feeling um, a lot of those symptoms that I just showed that just stay home just for the safety of individuals in your home. So if you start feeling symptoms, the best thing to do at that time is to um, take all the precautions by starting to um, isolate yourself to some extent and mask up in your home. So you don't, um, if you have COVID, you don't infect other individuals as well. And also um, for any businesses, customers, clients, employees that work in the tribal program or any sort of business, um, just continue to um, report these exposures so they're properly um, get tested and also quarantined. We still have isolation and quarantine areas across the Navajo Nation at Tuba City, Chinle, and um, Farmington. So all we, if you are curious about it and you can't safely quarantine and isolate um, and you don't know how to get a referral, you can always call the 928-871-7014 and also you can work with your healthcare provider on the Navajo Nation at one of the tribal health facilities or either um, IHS as well. So um, always open to encouraging individuals to um, isolate or quarantine safely. Vaccines are here and be patient, but we are hearing that there are a lot of vaccine drives. Um, I would encourage individuals to um, help um, individuals and their family that uh, might not have been vaccinated, but they're an elder or either they might have a disability or um, no way of um, getting to a mass event, um, help them, um, take them along. Um, this weekend, there are several events that will be found on our webpage um, so they can get vaccinated, especially if they're high risk. And so help each other, even your extended family members on your in-law side as well, um, even though um, make sure you mask up, but um, or either just identify individuals within their own household to encourage them to get vaccinated. So we want to reach all the elders, all the high-risk patients. We have spiritual leaders, we have first responders, all essential workers. Um, just get um, that information out and encourage others. and. As I mentioned, we're still in phase one, A, B, and C, but we're actually uh, reaching the 18-year-old population as well, uh, depending on what vaccine you take. Also that the vac depending on the vaccine, you're not immune immediately, just know that. So please take precautions to continue to mask up, social distance and all of those. And it doesn't matter if you get a vaccine or not, these are things that you're gonna have, we're all gonna have to do um, throughout the whole pandemic until we um, get a sense of community immunity um, across the Navajo Nation. So otherwise, um, we are not letting down. So please don't let down when you get a vaccine shot and think it's okay to host events, participate in event or anything of that sort. We still need to be in our household bubbles. So continue to be in our household bubbles and continue to wear a mask, avoid contact close contact with others if others are still gathering wood and chopping wood um, those are all important to continue to mask up and um, try to get um, wood gathering with your own household if not take all the precautions that you need to avoid unnecessary travel and wash your hands um, based on the recommendations and as i mentioned this we are looking at vaccinating our communities to protect us and this means getting individuals um, that are at high risk to these mass events this weekend and some are on Sunday. Um, so I think there was some in the Sanders to the city area as well. And also to understand that there remains a threat in the United States and to the Navajo Nation about these new variants. Some are um, changing as we speak. So just know that there is new information that's being provided every single day. Um, science is providing us a lot of information, but sometimes we might get overwhelmed um, about what this um, particular um, 
media is saying or others, but just know that all of those are very important to know. But we all know that the regular precautions that we take every single day that we've been saying to mask up, wash your hands are all the measures that we need that is at our fingertip. It is really up to us to continue to maintain that and also to understand that um, through this time we might deal a lot of with stress and mental um, health concerns, but take a break sometimes, try to eat healthy, exercise, avoid alcohol use and drugs, get enough sleep, take care of yourself and your family and your relatives, check on people and support each other. So I think um, that is the message that I have and also to um, encourage to stay in your home bubble, the safest places at home and in order to stop the spread. So So um, we don't want to let down and I just want to encourage everyone to um, continue to stay safe and stay at home. And so um, I'll hand it over back to Dr. Fowler if you want to um, introduce President. Thank you. Yeah, I should do yeah. that. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll go ahead and move to our Honorable President, Sitele uh, Nanahoji, President Ness. All right, let's try this again. Can you all hear me? Yes, go ahead, sir. All right, we are here in Petlapetol, and you probably hear the wind it's kicking up. Uh, I think we are in the maybe even the single digits with the wind chill uh, here. As you can see behind me, we have a tower, and you can see the guys up there. You can pan the camera way up there. And that is the reason why we're having internet issues. They haven't plugged it in yet, I think. But uh, we are here at the top of the top. And uh, Uh, towards the window rock, the Chuska is all the way down there. And so we're here uh, for ribbon cutting and uh, just giving you all an update on what's happening with COVID-19. And so uh, let's uh, come on over here. Come on over here. Hopefully the feet don't go out again. You got ship rock right behind us, the pinnacle. So Eli, let's start this again. If you can go to the two slides I showed you, I, I sent you, it's the comparison of the two. Uh, does that slide come up? Uh, it should be the two colored uh, graph, one orange and one blue. Maybe over there, if, if it shows up, it's not gonna show up on the Webex. It shows a downward uh, trend here. U.S. is the dark blue, and the Navajo Nation is the brown. So you can see that. But we're not letting up, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we are, uh, yes, going down, but we are doing, we're being very conservative. Even though you got your shots, maybe one or two, we're still asking you to um, continue to wear your mask, social distance, and um, wash your hands with soap and water, hand sanitizer, uh, sanitizer usage, and staying at home. So if you go to the next slide, the next slide should say the, the hub, public health capacity uh, 
report of COVID-19 vaccination, which is a con comparison between the U.S. and the Navajo Nation in terms of, of doses. Uh, we have received uh, a total uh, amount of vaccines, which is 133,765 total doses. Uh, total doses administered. Congratulations to everybody. We reached that 100,000 uh, goal and we have 101,332 total shots given uh, throughout the, uh, the time we received our first dose to today. Remember, we, we had a goal of 100,000 shots to be given by the end of February. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, reached that goal at 101,332. So congratulations, good job to all our healthcare workers throughout the Navajo Nation, those that are doing vaccination events, outstanding, outstanding. Those that have received the second doses, 20, 23,729 of you out of the 101 have received uh, the second doses. So the percent administered, 76% total uh, amount has been put into the arms of our Navajo citizens. So good job. And we wanted to uh, announce that and let everybody know that uh, our healthcare professionals are doing a great job in getting these vaccinations out and putting into the arms of our Navajo citizens. So we're going to continue to do that. Of course, you reach a goal, right? You're going to make a new goal. And so we're going to be reassessing uh, the shots that we have, what we're going to be getting. And our goal is to get uh, everyone that wanted uh, a shot here on the Navajo Nation. And so the, the studies have indicated that uh, based on 350,000, right? Uh, well, about uh, one in four and probably the people that live on the Navajo Nation, one in three uh, of our Navajo citizens have gotten vaccinated. We have people coming Navajo citizens coming back from all over, uh, you know, I guess all everywhere. Because I, I, I visited with uh, one um, family, a couple who came from South Dakota this past Saturday to get a shot in Shiprock. And uh, others coming from the larger uh, cities around here, uh, Phoenix, Albuquerque, uh, Denver, uh, Salt Lake. So... Uh, thank you to those individuals who uh, have come here and gotten their vaccine. So, telephone, cell phones today. ที่คอมเปตอปตโตคอมเปนาโกเคดาฮัตซินกีปาเคนิตซินเดนเลวอชิงตันเดเบสซินเดนเอชดาเซลอินชิเกโรชินเนอาโรตซาเชนฮาด
we're gonna turn it back over to uh, the folks uh, back in Windorock. Again, we're in Bitlapito uh, with a brand new cell tower. Maybe one more time, Jared. Even in the wind, these two workers are putting, turning on the, the cell tower and today is going to be the ribbon cutting for this area to have high speed internet. So thank you to the team NTUA Choice Wireless, local uh, delegate Amber Crotty. Communication Regulatory Commission, Chris Vicente, uh, and he'll give us a little bit uh, information about what's happening here so that everybody knows uh, what's um, what this project's all about and to also uh, highlight the many projects that have been funded by the CARES Act here too today. So uh, let us uh, give some time over to Christopher Bresenti and he'll tell us about not just this project but all the projects funded by CARES Act from the Navajo Nation Telecommunication Regulatory Commission Office. Introduce yourself. Yeah, hey everyone. Thank you, Mr. But Mr. President, Mr. President Nurse. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Especially from the community, coming from the community of Bacabato. Good morning, yeah, hey. Uh, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a crash course on a lot of the things that's been going on with CARES funding. So, uh, a couple of the sites that have been erected, such as this one, has been uh, brought to you by and thanks to all the CARES funding. So, this is the fourth new tower installment, and I am trying to recall the amount of numbers that NTUA has upgraded. I want to say it's about 80 sites that they completed so far, as far as uh, upgrading the sites to handle more capacity, because everyone's everyone's learning to understand with COVID, distant learning as well as telecommuting for work has been critical. So for, the, for our regional service providers to be able to provide this kind of work in a short amount of time, which typically takes about two years, a year and a half of planning, coordinating, engineering, et cetera, to get these things going, it, it's, it's been phenomenal. I mean, just last week we were in Tuba City. Tuba City never had tuba, our fiber, fiber, fiber connectivity to the community before until last week. Uh, Low Mountain, with another partner, uh, these guys were able to get a temporary tower out there in middle of COVID season or at the peak of COVID. So again, they're using creative options and solutions to help provide connectivity for everyone around Navajo Nation. So as far as uh, our regional service providers, I can't thank them enough for all the hard work they have done so far because with especially um, the, uh, the amount of collaboration so when, it, when, when, when these projects do come about, it takes a lot, a lot of planning and logistics. And I know our service providers have definitely put in the overtime to help get these things up and running. Uh, next thing that the CARES funding that will definitely be helping Navajo Nation with is the 2.5 gigahertz. Currently back in March of last year, we, uh, our office applied for a, a special temporary authority, which is basically a temporary license for the 2.5 originally branded as the education broad, uh, broadcast spectrum, which provided TV uh, to the classrooms for high schools. And eventually FCC decided to rebrand it to the education broadband spectrum. 
so that particular spectrum is basically the, the I want to say the creme de la creme for, for spectrum. So it's able to carry lots of capacity over a decent amount of range. So, of course, again, we're just trying to find modern day solutions to help um, get everyone connected. So 2.5, when you get a chance, NCUA is definitely going to be coming with, out with some plans for the 2.5 gigahertz. That should be able to handle a lot more traffic than what's currently available right now. Brand new spectrum, so we're excited to uh, look, and we're looking forward to FCC uh, actually providing the official license over to Navajo Nation. A little bit of um, background on the delay, too. The 2.5 gigahertz, it's currently, um, as, as everyone knows, in Rama as well as Eastern Territory, there's a lot of checkerboard territory. So in January, uh, President Nez, myself, and because uh, wireless it can't be engineered to be able to just provide services to those areas that are that are clusters, if you will, like the uh, checkerboard territories. So, for ex again, for Eastern Agency, we're trying to provide a contiguous shape. So, if you want to check out the map that we submitted, if you want, if you Google FCC tribal 2.5 look for the map on there and you'll see navajo nation you'll see a green outline of what we're fighting for for navajo nation especially for rama uh as well as eastern so there may be a delay but we're definitely fighting to make sure that we get our part especially for the chapter boundaries that way we can expand uh 2.5 as much as we can throughout navajo nation so that's basically the uh, what i have to provide for right now but Thank you so much. Thank you, President. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Christopher Basenti, for your hard work. One of our Nez Lizer executive directors doing an outstanding job. As you all uh, know, he uh, also reestablished our, our relationship uh, with the FCC, get e rate funding. You know, gosh, almost a decade, maybe even over a decade. Uh, of how uh, the nation lost that and uh, fixed it. And we were able to connect, uh, what is it, 90, 90. 90 chapters and uh, Head Start facilities. So Vice President's here, he made it. Uh, he was up in um, Shiprock earlier at the uh, healthcare center. Did you uh, tell us a little bit about the healthcare center? Maybe you visited the staff there. Um, I just popped in, I did a real quick spot. Uh, I didn't really get any numbers or whatnot, but we always like chi uh, chiming in with our Northern Naval Medical Center, the uh, health staff there, uh, everybody's doing a phenomenal job. And uh, like always, the parking lot was full, so uh, we appreciate them. And we'll get down there again uh, and, and uh, check in with them. Uh, but today, hey, we're excited. Uh, that was a town hall earlier, uh, opening prayer, and a uh, little spot duty. And then we're up here at the Clapton Tour. And uh, what a beautiful site. It's pretty windy, pretty cold, but uh, brand new tower. So, you know, a few months ago, there was nothing up here, just another uh, hump, of, hump of earth and a bunch of rocks. But now, we've, uh, you just heard from Chris Vicente, the capacity and everything that's happened, all the modern day fixes and whatnot. So the nation is stepping another couple of steps into the future or, you know, catching up anyway. But uh, enhanced broadband, enhanced wireless coverage for those that have uh, into a wireless phone. So broadband, Cares that going to work for you? The the, the dollars being spent wisely, and uh, again, this takes a tremendous amount of collaboration. We appreciate our president's leadership. We appreciate uh, Chris Vicente's leadership, and uh, everybody you know that's laid hand. Uh, Melina Sosi, uh, general manager for Internet Wireless, give her a big shout out. Bet she's pretty excited on doing a lot of these things because when you bring new products, new uh, changes to the Navajo Nation, that's kind of what Ms. Lige is all about. We'll take a little credit for it, but it's all on them. They have a great uh, collaboration and the unity and the uh, the money as well, right? Funding. The things we could do if we had more funding. So that's what President and the leadership of the Navajo Nation constantly advocating, constantly looking for external funds to replenish what is a dwindling uh, reserve here on the nation. As you know, some revenues are took a hit with the close era of NGS, but we're going forward. We're not looking back. We got to look at the next energy project, right? Uh, the next uh, time we can bring, and there's a second dispersal of CARES Act funding. We're advocating again there, uh, thinking to our Washington office there, and we're looking at any 
and all funding that's available to us. Again, we're just going to keep on leaving no stone on turn and uh, more projects like this to, to come uh, even during the summer. And as we're still being safe uh, from the COVID virus, right, and the parents that are out there, uh, continue to uh, look forward and look at all the opportunities that are out there. And so right now, I just want to thank uh, Mr. President. And I also want to give some time to Miss um, Navajo, Shandine Paris. She's up here with us. She's brave in the cold, but she looks really warm. And she looks very beautiful at that. So I just want to, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Miss Navajo. Second term, Miss Navajo Nation, John D. Perry. <laughs> yeah, it's Evan. Good morning, everyone. Um, as president, vice president, and our executive director, Chris Vicente, mentioned we are here in the Clavis Club, right on the border of New Mexico and Arizona. So we are definitely feeling the northern wind, and we're feeling the wind off of the mountain. Um, we're actually on a plateau, um, and so the wind is hitting us pretty hard. But uh, luckily, we're all trying to make do with our warm weather um, clothes. So I just want to encourage everybody to continue to look out for your family members and remember to um, gather wood um, with the uh, CDC protocols in mind to make sure that you take care of one another um, and make sure that you are all um, um, checking in and making sure that you know what this week's weather is like. Um, this morning before we got here, we actually stopped in Navajo and we stopped at the preschool there to drop off some personal protective equipment and um, the um, daycare there they they help the community um, with the different um, the adults that um, have to go back to work and there there's nobody there to watch their children and the children go there they're um, they're adapting to the circumstances and we just dropped off some hand sanitizer and some um, cleaning supplies for them. Um, but again, I just want to say good morning to everyone and I hope you are all taking care of one another. It's good to see you on this beautiful February morning. Um, so I just want to say hello and I'll turn it back over to Eli. Bye. Thank you to the presenters out at the clock the toe. Uh, thank you to all the listeners at this time. We'll go ahead and turn it over to Captain Brian Johnson. Mr. Johnson. Hey, uh, uh, hello, Dr. Fowler, and thank you. And and um, appreciate the updates. It's exciting to see the work that's uh, going on on the Navajo Nation uh, in terms of improving uh, broadband capability and telecommunications capabilities around the Navajo. Uh, we all know that that's a, certainly a dire need and uh, certainly glad to see that. Um, again, this is uh, Captain Brian Johnson, um, presently serve as the acting uh, Air deputy area director for the Navajo Area Indian Health Service, work in St. Michael's, Arizona. And again, I'll keep my uh, comments brief today. Uh, I think the, the, the biggest part of our conversation today will be presented by Dr. Vaugh, but I do have just uh, several items I'd like to just touch on real quick. Um, again, from the Navajo Area Indian Health Service. And uh, basically, um, you know, in this stage of the um, pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we're, we continue to work very diligently at all the healthcare facilities uh, here on the Navajo Nation. And um, we, again, are, are really trying to prioritize to the best of our abilities, the uh, COVID-19 vaccinations. And I know there's been some conversation this morning, uh, as well as in previous sessions concerning this, uh, the vaccinations. And I just wanna say once again, just how important that is that uh, we all <clears throat> um, get vaccinated so that we can uh, protect uh, not only ourselves, but our family members and friends and others that are around us. Um, in order for the vaccine to be effective for our population, um, we do need a, a large number of individuals to be vaccinated so we can uh, basically stop uh, the viral transmission in, a, in its tracks and, um, and hopefully uh, move on and, and get back to a more normalcy in our lives. But um, we still have a ways to go and we just ask everybody to please be patient as we move forward and, and again, trying to prioritize getting these vaccines out there to the population, making them accessible 
and um, doing what we can to, to provide good customer service and patient care uh, to, our, to our patients. Um, again, we, we continue to meet uh, on a routine basis. I know Dr. Jim mentioned this earlier uh, with all of our federal and tribal partners. Um, you know, I like to mention those facilities, uh, Chinle Service Unit, uh, Crown Point Service Unit, Kayenta Service Unit, uh, Gallup and Shiprock Service Units, and also the tribal facilities of Winslow, Fort Defiance, uh, Sage Memorial, Tuba City, and Utah Navajo. Uh, I, I think I got everybody uh, named in, in, that, in that brief uh, uh, discussion. But um, we, we do appreciate all the partnership that continues to go on with all the healthcare facilities. And I always like to point out that we don't look at our health facilities as individual health facilities. We, we look at them as a health care system. And it's really important that, that we all understand that, that all of these facilities are here for the Navajo people. And um, we want to make sure that we're providing the best care, care available. Um, just also wanted to mention real quick that um, just to make sure that the, the listening public has, a, has an idea of how uh, the, the vaccine rollout is going. Uh, overall, it's still going ex extremely well for our region here on the Navajo Nation. Um, I, I want to say that um, uh, congratulations to the Navajo Nation and to all the healthcare partners as there's been numerous uh, positive comments um, and some uh, published articles uh, in national news, in regional news, et cetera, um, that's talking about the, the, the job that's going on here on the Navajo Nation uh, and, and just in how well we're doing with uh, getting the vaccine out and making it accessible to the public. And we realize there's not some bumps in the road along the way. Um, that's that goes along with almost anything, as we all know. But we know that comparatively speaking, um, we are doing extremely well uh, working together with the Navajo Nation leadership, uh, working together with all the healthcare partners to to get that uh, vaccine out there and to make sure it's accessible in terms of weekdays, uh, weekends and uh, just making sure that we're doing what we can. Uh, I know when we look around the area, um, we know that uh, many of the healthcare staff are are extremely tired. This has been a long, ongoing pandemic, as we all know. It's 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 been a, a tough road for not only families, uh, individual families, and extended families, but also uh, for healthcare workers and teachers and other types of professionals that's had to work through this. And and I just want to give a, a a huge shout out and thank you for all of those who've come together to make sure that services uh, continue to be provided here on the Navajo Nation and uh, that, that we're all working together and uh, realizing that, again, that we still have a ways to go, but overall, um, the way that uh, the, the uh, way that this uh, pandemic has been approached locally, um, I'm proud to be a part of that effort and uh, doing what we can, again, to, to serve others. Um, I also wanted to make a comment that um, based on those uh, national comments, again, in the national media and in, in uh, state and, and large city uh, municipality uh, uh, newspapers, um, we've been identified, it's been identified that IHS continues to be in the, in the top 20 percent uh, nationally for the uh, vaccine administration. And um, we're certainly proud of that. Um, when I, when, again, when I, when I say IHS, I'm really talking about our healthcare system uh, here on the Navajo Nation. And um, it's, it's a really, uh, again, a, a proud achievement. We all know that we face uh, various challenges uh, being in remote areas uh, in Indian country, um, whether that be, whether we're talking about some of the roads that we use, uh, the highways, the roads, the weather conditions, the distance between health facilities, all of those things come together to impact uh, how well we can respond to COVID-19. And I'm, I'm just happy to say that uh, it's we've been recognized nationally for the work that's been going on here, as well as at other IHS facilities um, across the U.S. So again, congratulations. And that, that would not be um, that would not be a true statement unless we had the, the, the help of the public. And I just want to say thank you to the general public uh, here on Navajo for responding so well 
re again, realizing that, that the vaccination process is not perfect and it's very challenging, but uh, there again, we've had excellent responses and, um, and and we just appreciate appreciate that and appreciate you for what you do out there. Um, again, when we look at the vaccine situation nationally, in general, uh, we, we talk about the fact that we, we know that we don't have an adequate uh, supply of vaccine on a, on a week in or week out basis. But what we do know is that everything is being, uh, efforts are, are underway and have been underway to uh, manufacture and produce more vaccine and it gets distributed to uh, various parts of the United States, all across the United States. And uh, we get uh, contacted each week, typically on Sundays, uh, to let us know what shipment is coming and, and how much we will be receiving of both the Moderna and uh, the Pfizer vaccine. And I, you know, I, I think that this is important because it does impact the timing of how we go about setting up and scheduling vaccine events here uh, on the, the Navajo Nation. Uh, we, we, gener we do get some information that gives us some idea about the amounts that we'll be receiving, and, and that can be uh, provided two to three weeks in advance. But it's not until the week of that we actually receive and make sure that we have those um, doses in our hand, the vaccine doses, so that we can make sure that we have an adequate amount when we're setting up uh, vaccine clinics. So if there's any questions out there about how come we can't set up uh, long-term clinics and, and, and long-term uh, mass vaccination clinics, a lot of this is dependent upon how much vaccine we do receive and the timing of when we receive that vaccine. And so I realize that that requires all of us to exercise some patience and uh, we'll continue to do that and, and try to share information openly and as broadly as we can uh, concerning that. As, um, as President Nez mentioned in his uh, section of this uh, Facebook Live session, uh, we did hit over 100,000 uh, case uh, vaccinations. So congratulations again to the, to the public out there. That's a, that's a monumental um, uh, task and, and achievement that's been reached and we're, we're extremely happy about that. Um, the doses of vaccine continue to come in every week. And uh, this week we did have some impacts on the delivery time or the delivery schedule because of the winter weather. And so we're, tr we're, we're quickly catching up on that. But I just wanted to say congratulations to the public as well uh, for that, reaching that monumental uh, uh, 101,332 vaccinations. Uh, so we're, we're really excited about that. Again, I just want to mention that um, this, the, safe, the best thing you can do uh, in terms of prevention of COVID-19 transmission is um, get your uh, vaccination. It is the most effective and reliable way to keep yourself and your family um, protected during this time. But as was shared earlier in this session, we know that we must continue those social prevention measures of uh, watching our distance, wearing a mask, and continuing to wash our hands diligently. Uh, we still have to follow those three W's, uh, again, wearing your mask, washing your hands, and watching your distance. Um, I shared on Tuesday that I was um, in town in Gallup uh, recently and was inside a, a retail store and became very uncomfortable because I really felt that people were not respecting the distance that we talk about. We still need to keep that six foot distance and we, and we need to hold retailers accountable for that. Um, if, if you feel uncomfortable with that situation, please uh, let people know. Um, it's, um, it's something that we need to respect and um, I, I saw many people standing uh, next to each other, and these were didn't appear to be family members. They appeared to be individuals standing in line waiting to uh, check out and was literally two feet, one feet away from each other. Uh, so I just want to remind everyone, please um, make sure you are um, taking those measures. Even though you may have received the vaccine, we still need to do that to stop this uh, pandemic. Um, again, I know that there continues to be lots of questions about what's referred to as the COVID-19 
uh, variant strains. And um, for the purposes of, the, of, of this Facebook, we do not go into the details. However, I just want to state that we do continue to have individuals who monitor what's going on regionally, uh, statewide, uh, nationally. And also we know that um, experts with CDC and um, other high level health officials are continuing to watch those variants. Um, the variants are a natural um, development of, of viruses. They, they do go through what we refer to as mutations. So this is not unexpected, but it is something that's very important and it's something that we must um, keep an eye on. And that's why when we talk about getting our vaccinations, um, making sure that we use that tool uh, to protect ourselves and our families, but also continuing to, again, wash our hands, wear our masks, and watch our distance. It, it all comes together. And so we need to make sure that we're doing what we can to fight any new variants that may show up uh, in our area. So I just wanted to mention that. And at this point, I think I'll go ahead and end, uh, wrap up my comments. I just want to thank everyone out there, uh, again, the general public for what you do in terms of your interest and the level of energy around uh, vaccinations and, and getting your family members vaccinated. It's been wonderful. And uh, again, if we had more vaccine, we could we can certainly uh, vaccinate more people, but we'll continue to prioritize. We'll continue to work through those uh, scheduling events. Um, make sure that um, you're contacting your local facility if you have questions about the time um, or times of vaccine events and uh, they'll certainly respond to you. But uh, I just also want to also thank all the healthcare workers who continue uh, to push forward uh, through this pandemic. We've been, we're in it over a year now, and um, I'm just really proud of, of everyone in our healthcare system who has stood up and really kept that level of energy going uh, despite some tough times. So uh, we will get through this, as has been said, we will get through this and uh, we're going to do so in a positive way. So thank you everyone for the opportunity to talk. And now I'm going to turn the time over to our own uh, Dr. Vall, who uh, is from our Chinle service unit and does an outstanding job with uh, the gating measures and the epidemiological data. So Dr. Vall, um, we're going to turn the floor over to you. To the president's office, to our leadership, Dr. Jim, everybody. Um, I'm always very grateful to be able to share and communicate this information to our leadership and really also to the community members out there listening in this morning. Um, what I will be providing some updates on, it, I will be speaking about our gating indicators and where we are in regards to community risk, well, community spread, um, risk of COVID-19, um, what, what our goals are at this time as we're experiencing this downtrend to reach that next phase so that we can really, you know, we're setting the bar high, but really so that we can really get down to as close to zero, if not zero cases as possible. I will speak a little bit also in regards to vaccines, just as a reminder of what to do um, for masking, vaccines, and I'll touch a little bit on the COVID-19 strains that are that is currently being tracked here by our team as well as by, of course, CDC and nationally and regionally and across the states. And so with that, let me go ahead and start. Let's see. Um, and so first of all, I'm going to actually spend a little time on this slide here. So right now we are in phase zero. And what that means is that our case burden is still very high. So for every 100,000 people, we have more than 25 cases um, daily. Um, and, and our test positivity 
you know, is still greater than 10%. And then we look at hospital capacity and public health capacity and spread. Our next goal is to really, you know, look at these indicators and try to bring down our degree of community spread in cases so that uh, we reach into the phase one, um, phase one um, territory. And what that means is that, you know, there's still substantial community spread and disease risk is high, but then our case burden is less, our test positivity is supporting that, and that our hospital capacity and public health capacity is experiencing some level of relief. And so when I speak about the indicators, I will speak about what those next targets are. And so this was um, brought up by President Nez. And this curve, this is our um, epi curve. And indeed, we are in a downtrend since the holiday season. And this downtrend is real and is supported by other measures as well. And so we know that cases are going down here for Navajo Nation as well as the United States. And so the second slide um, that I'm bringing up is the same slide as President Nez is essentially just saying that across the United States, um, across the Four Corner region, and here in Navajo Nation, we are indeed seeing seeing a drop in cases, um, and and is supported by other things as well. And so, what does that mean for us moving forward, and what we need to do? So, how do we know that this is indeed real? There's a few ways. The first one is that we track what we call the infection rate. And so what this slide shows you is that for every person, for every case of COVID-19, what is that person's ability to effectively transmit COVID-19 to others? Can I transmit disease to one person, two people, three people, four people? The more that you're able to transmit disease to, um, the quicker that outbreak gross, right? And so right now, our infection rate is less than one. And this is the last over the last seven day period, ending last week. And this is good news, because what it means is, it means that for every case of COVID-19, they're transmitting COVID-19 to less than a person, as you can see here by the, um, the, the, the figures, right? And so what that also tells us is that we should expect fewer cases, which further supports why we are continuing to see this downtrend. Um, and then even looking at it this way, when you look at the map regionally and across the four states, we see that as well. You know, there are two, there are two numbers that I'm providing here. The first one is looking at the average daily cases for every 100,000 people over a two week period, 14 days. And before, when we presented this, this was like very high, you know, you, you saw it cl close to 100 even. Um, and now what we do see is that over the last 14 days, it was 40. So 40 average daily cases for every 100,000 people. Over the last seven days is 28. If we get that number less than 25, then we know our degree of COVID-19 out in the community in terms of spread is going down and that the risk of COVID-19, you know, circulating in the community will also be going down. And so our next target here is to get it less than 25. Now, when we look very similarly, looking at, you know, a more detailed view of the eight, um, IHS facilities and tribal health organization areas combined. What we do see in this grid is that, you know, you're seeing, you know, we're no longer seeing that dark purple. Um, we're seeing more orange um, as evidenced in Crown Point, Kienta and Shiprock and our New Mexico satellite areas. We're also seeing that, that, that column in the middle, all the lines are going down um, and then we look at the test positivity across these regions as well. And again, it says this a, a similar, it tells us a similar story that our cases are indeed going down. It's relatively evenly distributed across Navajo Nation and other supportive measures support that, such as test positivity. And as I mentioned, the infection rate. Um, here is our latest test positivity. 
Um, the, you know, one of, the, one of our targets is that we're trying to get our test positivity less than 10%. Right now, over the last seven days, our test positivity is 14% for all of Navajo Nation. So we know we're heading in that direction. Um, and hopefully we can get this maybe in the next week or two to be less than 10%. Um, we continue to be testing about, on average, over the last seven days, 422 tests um, on average per day. We do know that our test volume is going down. Um, likely this is because people are focusing on vaccines. Um, and so, so, you know, some may say, are, you know, are the cases going down because we're not testing as much? The answer to that is that, yes, we do have to continue to test. Um, we, the testing will still play a critical role. However, as I mentioned earlier, there are other measures to tell us that really our cases going down are really going down. As I discussed, looking at this regionally, looking at the pattern um, of our infection rate, it all supports, and then also, you know, which I'll go into a little bit, hospitalizations. There are other measures that tell us we really are going down despite knowing that our test volume is going down. But we do have to um, focus on testing still as a tool. So this is where we know why our, our cases are really also going down. It's when we look at hospitalizations. This is staffed inpatient ICU bed utilization across Navajo Nation. We see that our hospital beds utilized that are staffed are going down. We also see that our hospitalizations um, for ICU beds um, utilized are also going down to further support, yes, our case burden really is going down. Across the four states, and so this graph here, you see a lot of lines, different colors. Really, we're just looking, are these lines, you know, are they angling down? Are they heading down? And the lines represent the different states, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado. And what we do know is that not all the lines are below that 80% threshold, but they're all going down. And so here in Navajo Nation, our hospitalizations are going down and utilization is going down across the four states. They're seeing a similar pattern where cases are going down and ICU utilization is going down as well. Now, how about contact tracers? So contact tracing will still remain a critical tool in this public health response even though we know we have a vaccine program up and running um, as well. And the reason for that is because, again, we will do all that we can to try to get this outbreak control, to try to get our case numbers down, um, to, you know, to try to get as close to zero cases as possible. And so for contact tracing, we, at the end of last week, we had 408 contact tracers. And so what that means is that we aim to have five or more contact tracers for every daily new case. And we have met that marker. We currently have six current contact tracers for every daily new case. And so we know if someone is a case, we have enough staff to be able to identify that case, interview that case, figure out who they may have unintentionally exposed um, and then reach out to those contacts to notify them and provide proper guidance on quarantine, isolation, and testing. So this was presented earlier um, as well. And this data, I just want to note a few different things here, is that this data was captured as of, um, as of all of the 16th, so February 16th. And so we know that, you know, as, you know, we've distributed Navajo Nation has distributed 133,000 or 134,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine and has administered over 100,000 doses of COVID-19, which is monumental. Um, and, and so we know we have administered 76% of our doses distributed. And so we are definitely getting vaccines out there. People are getting their vaccines. Um, and so I do appreciate the team that's been working on this and rolling this out, as well as to the community members that are coming and, you know, despite some of the logistical challenges, still coming and getting vaccinated. 
And so overall for now, we do remain in phase zero just because again, our case burden is still high. It isn't quite less than 25 average cases per day just yet. Our test positivity is at 14%, which is better, but it's not less than 10% just yet. We have seen improvement in hospital capacity and we have seen um, improvement in our contact tracing capacity as well. And so we know we're heading in the right direction where soon we will we will reach that orange phase where there will be a uh, where community spread is less and risk of COVID-19 is less than before. Now outside of Navajo Nation what we do know is that when we compare ourselves to the four states and to the rest of the United States so the four states are in red Navajo Nation is in orange and then the rest of the U.S. and jurisdictions are in gray is that we dropped in rank um, in regards to the number of new cases over the last seven day period. That is actually good. We want to be last. That's our goal. Um, and so we dropped from 12th to 25th. And what that means is that we know regionally all the cases are going down. Um, but right now we are behind Arizona and Utah. And so that just means that our cases are going down a little bit faster than say Arizona and Utah. But regionally we know cases are indeed going down. Now, when we look at this, we, we do look at it in more detail. This, this table provides that. It gives information on Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah, as well as now the whole nation. And what we do understand is that decrease in cases is it's here and it's regional as well. Um, the test positivities across all four states include, and to Navajo Nation continues to go down. The infection rate um, across the four states and Navajo Nation is less than one. Um, and we are working on trying to get a better idea of the percent of the Navajo community members that have at least gotten their first shot of COVID-19 um, vaccine. And so hopefully we'll be able to present that soon. Um, but what we do from this table, what we understand is that the risk is still high in terms of COVID-19 risk, but at least the trends are improving across the region and here in Navajo Nation. And if it does, if our neighbors do well, we do well. And here's another map to show that and where this trend really is just broadly across the United States. You're seeing a lot more orange. We even see a yellow. And so we know that our risk of COVID-19 is for the U.S. and even regionally is improving. So this next slide I'm going to discuss. I'll say a little bit something about the, the variants of COVID-19. And so as Captain Johnson eloquently just mentioned, is that, you know, with viruses, the more virus that's out there, the more opportunity to shift and respond to the environment and mutate, right? Um, some mutations are, don't do anything. And then some mutations or changes makes that virus survive longer. Um, and so, so what the CDC is currently tracking is they're tracking three different types of COVID-19 variants. And so these variants have shifted and changed to some degree. They're still COVID-19, but they've made changes in such a way that we have to really be monitoring them to see whether or not it impacts people in terms of like how well the vaccines work, um, how sick can you possibly get? Does this mean that you know people can transmit disease even faster? all these questions. And so the three variants are the B117 variant, which was originally identified in England, the B1351 variant, which was first identified in South Africa, and then the P1 variant, which was first identified in Brazil. I'm gonna focus in on the B117 variant. That variant has now been, um, they've reported close to 1200 cases in the US. Um, in 40 different states. This has doubled in size in terms of um, cases identified over the last week. And so we know that that variant is indeed on its way to be the more dominant variant. Um, now the variant that was identified in South Africa, the B1351, we are also watching and monitoring that very closely both regionally and across the US um, because we do understand that that may that may have some impact on um, our, the, you know, the, the ability of the vaccine to provide pr protection. 
um, as well as reinfections. And so we're watching that very closely as well. And right now that B1351 variant is, has been identified in California, Texas, North Carolina, and Illinois. I do understand also that, or our team is also aware that there is that New Mexico variant that was identified um, over Valentine's Day as well as the California variant that they believe may have contributed to the outbreaks in California. And so we are tracking that and working with our state partners to be able to track that here um, as well on Navajo Nation. And so overall, you know, the tools that we're using for this public health response, as we go down, this is not time, the time to let up. <laughs> this is the time to really, you know, to really try to drive risk of COVID-19 as low as possible. So do everything that you're currently doing. Um, and so we will continue to ask people to social distance, to wear a mask, um, to avoid gatherings. Um, in the meantime, we are working and then get vaccinated when you're able to get vaccinated. And on our end, we continue to do contact tracing. We are advocating for the ability to track changes of COVID-19 here on Navajo Nation so we have a better understanding of what is affecting our population. And then, you know, and then we will continue to try to protect as many people as possible. And so just as a friendly reminder on masks, should you double mask? Sure, yes. Um, and what are you looking for in regards to the mask? What you're looking for is that you want Remember, focus on, like what, what I like to say is focus on fit and filtration. Filtration means is that you are wearing that, you know, the ability of that mask to filter out um, COVID-19. And so a surgical, and so here you're thinking of layers, right? So you want a mask with layers. A surgical mask will do that. It, it will provide that, those layers. But what it may not provide is the fit. And so the fit means, and this is why the second mask, is that you want to wear a second mask so that you, you cover your nose completely and around your, and around your chin, right? In order to do that, you can do that two ways, a surgical mask underneath or, and a, another mask or a cloth mask over it. If you only have access to a surgical mask, make sure that you pick a mask that covers the nose and you're able to um, pinch it with a nose wire and tie the strings around your ears so that if you do that, it'll, it, it will provide a better fit and you can tuck the mask in underneath. And so this will protect you from your, res your respiratory particles um, from escaping and going to others, but it also protects others' respiratory droplets from getting to you. And so fit and filtration and double mask. The other um, reminder I wanted to set was testing will still be important. And so despite even your vaccine status, if you have been identified as a contact or if you think you have, have had a high risk exposure, please get tested. Um, in regards to vaccines, you know, a lot of questions we hear is what should I do if I've gotten both doses? First of all, with the vaccines, make sure like before the vaccines can even be um, as effective as they're said to be effective, like 94% effective or 95% effective, you need two doses. And, and then there's a period that you, your body has to really build that immunity to be able to fight off COVID-19. And so two doses and 14 days afterwards to really achieve that effectiveness. What do you do afterwards though? The same thing. We do not change anything we do. Social distance, masking, double mask if you can, um, wash your hands and, you know, get tested if you're a contact or have had a high risk exposure. You still do all those other things because there's still a lot of unknowns out there, um, especially in regards to the variants that are, are emerging. And lastly, I just want to, uh, you know, say thank you to everybody from our unified EPI team, Area Office, Navajo Nation, the Navajo EPI Center, you know, our leadership, President Nez, Dr. Jim, um, Dr. Fowler, who will be explaining all of this. Um, so thank you, everyone, and thank you to those out there who took the time to listen. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Va and Captain Brian Johnson. I appreciate all that you do, not only for our people, but to be recognized um, 
uh, nationally, you know, that's, that's a plus for each and every one of us. And thank you to all the teams that have been doing this. United States Ni 
a lot of us are not back at 100% customer service for yeni khajine la e khotod ni hitne lini hitchata aus en khajo bich ya ta ski pech tan ta di tsin a ski so bich en ta hasne a do o o khota ta sto bich en ta hasne khach e el i hota a kon bich en ta hajil na ya at e khalati de nen lini za de en ta hasne za de tan ta kha o ha yu a an ta ya do a an ta na apan al de ako ani hepe eta akhosnyado be eta akhonosen khajo sad lini hajo be che eta che to e a khui che hota be 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 na akhishin kindo be ta akhishin kino ya at e shik e do shidne ako hon sagoshin kha na ta il ya do le ko je na or kedo eta ata hosnya shik e do shidne ki he ko je kha na ta si yo kizi ba ye ni zen a ben soit a e kodo ben hitin da huil ne don hit be ishtan e nilsen a do yo dan hini nini ben na a kui jehot a ni hit e hane en del i jashin sa do a kon del nesta sa dan sa den del lishin de a do i hit a huil za o a a ni hit a hasil za a kon de ni hit a dol do e nilsen do a da tsodol zen do da a da hosia Kun sogo eya kodo nihil nata hosil na dole na hihe.